recent announcement for Vapor version 3.8, which includes two new enhancements and several new bug fixes, many of which were reported to us by users on our forum. So thank you guys for doing that. We really appreciate it. The two new enhancements uh, include one major enhancement and one minor one. The minor enhancement is the ability for you to save your camera position to a file, which was useful for me uh, when I was dealing with this uh, simulation we see on the right um, that included three other simulations at lower resolution. Saving the camera position to a file allowed me to pick a perspective like the one we're seeing here and then apply it to the other simulations so they could be compared side by side. But the major uh, enhancement that's coming into Vapor for version 3.8 is the addition of uh, Jupyter widgets to Vapor's Python API. Vapor 3.7 uh, included a new uh, scripting API through Python that allows you to uh, use Vapor's rendering algorithms through a Jupyter notebook or a Python script. In version 3.8, this one, we include the ability to um, manipulate the scene and move the camera from a Jupyter notebook as well as the ability to add sliders in other widgets that allow you to adjust the parameters of what you're rendering in your Jupyter Notebook. And really the best way to, um, to show this, I guess, is, uh, or to, to, to demonstrate this is to show it. Um, here I have a Jupyter Notebook uh, currently running, and I'm running one of Vapor's example scripts with the Jupyter widgets. And the first thing we do is render an ISO surface, uh, create a visualizer to explore the scene. That's what we have here. And then, here we can see I can now click on that widget and move it around. And then down here below that, there is an example of us changing the ISO value of our ISO surface through the Jupyter Notebook. And so what I'm going to do now is show you guys uh, the quick and easy steps to install Vapor, uh, Vapor's Python API onto your computer so you can experiment with uh, these examples like what I'm doing right now. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up a terminal window and um, Vapor 3.8 is now hosted on anaconda.org. So I can easily install it uh, with just a few commands like I'll demonstrate now. The first thing you have to do though is install um, Anaconda or Miniconda. For those of you who don't know, just go to anaconda.org. And then there's a download button right here. Once you have Anaconda downloaded and installed, uh, your terminal is gonna be prefixed with um, a value like what we see right here. This is your Conda environment. By default, you'll be using the base environment. If I do a Conda, let me clear out, I'll do Conda, NV, uh, this, I believe is the command. And then this will list all of the Conda environments that I have. These are all test environments we've been using in preparation for 3.8. But what you're gonna wanna do, uh, the first thing, once Conda is installed, will be Conda, NV, create, dash N, and then that dash n is going to define your environment name. So I'm going to call this um, Vapor 3.8. And get the wrong command. Maybe create. Conda create, I think. And I will uh, put these commands at the bottom of the video so you guys can just copy and paste them from there. But I'm going to march through uh, all these commands real quick just for demonstration's sake. And I will be fast forwarding because uh, some of these sections such as installing Vapor and all of its dependencies can take a while. So fast forward, will be key. I will proceed with my new environment. And then you can see um, my new environment, Vapor 3.0 is right there. I'm gonna activate it, as they suggest here, with Conda activate Vapor 3.8. And then installing Vapor should be as easy as Conda install dash C, uh, Conda Forge. Uh, Conda Forge is a Conda channel where we uh, pull our third party libraries from. And then the other channel we will be installing from is called NCAR Vapor, which hosts the actual package. And then the application name, Vapor. And this will take a while, so I should be fast forwarding in light of that. A brief hiccup, I realized that I didn't create my Vapor 3.8 environment correctly. It was a bit of a while. Um, so don't do what I did a second ago. Follow the commands at the bottom of the video, which are conda create dash in Vapor 3.8, and then also specify Python equals 3.9. Gotta have Python at least 3.9 for this environment to work for us. 
So once I do that, you know, I already have that in the document, so I'm good to go. I've uh, issued the conda install dash c conda forge dash c in call vapor vapor. Issue that command, which will install vapor, and then from that point, I can go into a Python environment to verify that I have everything. So here I am in the Python 3.1 environment. I will try importing vapor. Oops, I need to connect vapor. And then once that succeeds, I know that Vapor is now installed in my current environment. So I'm just going to exit out of this session, clear my terminal, and then what I will do is I will cd into a directory. Uh, there's an environment, environment variable in Conda. Once you install it, it's called Conda Prefix. And Conda Prefix, if I do TWP, this is the um, prefix to the current environment that I'm in, which is 3.1. From there, to get to my examples that Come in this installation. I will cd into uh, lib python 3.1 site packages. And there should be a vapor here. Cd into here and then ls. We can see we have all these uh, example. These are these are um, vapor's modules. Alongside these modules, I have example notebooks and examples. If I do ls on examples, these are the Python examples. Ls onto example notebooks. These are the Jupyter Notebook examples. So I'm going to clear CD into example notebooks. Now I'm going to run Jupyter Notebook, launch my server, and then my browser window. And here I can pick from the Jupyter Notebooks in the directory that I launched my server from. I'm going to click on Visualizer Widget Example. And I'm not going to go too deep into everything this is doing because the Python API honestly needs a very deep dive. It's uh, pretty complex and all of the different objects and entities can be a little bit overwhelming. So this is just a quick demo to get you guys uh, to the examples. Once I have my uh, notebook running or open, I can run it and then I'll shorten my screen a little bit. So here I've uh, simply created an ISO surface, I've instantiated a new renderer, and then shown my session. See there, there we go. And then I will continue running, creating a visualizer to explore the scene. So I now have a new visualizer instance which I can manipulate. And the next step, or now that's this step. Once I've initiated the visualizer, I can now manipulate the scene. Zoom out and bring that down closer. That's the visualizer window we see here. And then finally, Let's run the next one. This step will give us a slider to manipulate the ISO render. So now you can see down here, I have a slider within my Jupyter notebook and I can also manipulate the scene that way. So that's the, uh, I don't know, the basics of one example. Again, we're gonna go through a tutorial that's a much deeper dive into all this uh, coming up. So stay tuned for that. As well as another tutorial we'll be doing on um, a work prior data set. So we've got a couple of guides that are in the pipe uh, for you guys to hopefully enjoy once they're out there. So I hope that all made sense. Uh, stay tuned for more news and ask questions on our forum, all linked below. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy Vapor 3.8. Thank you.